And now we're going to find a confidence interval again, but this time we have a raw data set to work with. Won't that be fun? All right, so an ESPN researcher takes a random sample of NBA players from the 2019-20 season and finds their weights. Note there were 514 NBA players that season. Okay, so what is the sample and what's its size? What's the population? And I'll actually add what's its size as well, just for fun. Um, I'm going to add that in and its size. I'll add that to the notes for future. Okay, so the sample was the random NBA players. So random NBA players, not their heights, the players themselves are the sample. And the sample size, which is little n, is 20. You can see 4 times 5 is 20. Right, there's 4 rows, 5 columns. Oh, and I should say it was the 2019 20 season, 1920 season. Oh, I ran out of space. Okay, so this would be all NBA players from the 1920 season. And capital N, which is the population size, is given. It's 514. All right, so there we have our sample size, and there we have our population size. All right, now we want to verify the requirements that are needed to make this interval are met. So first one is always random, and that's given, so that's easy. Then we want to know independent. Now this is a bit tricky. Our population size is not large, so it's not super big, so we're actually going to have to check this time. So we need little n to be less than 0.05 capital N. So we need 20 to be less than 0.05 of 514. So we're going to have to grab Desmos and find what that is. All right, so Desmos. Let's take, oh, let me clear out this old stuff. 0.05 times 514 is 25.7. Oh, we just managed it. So 20 is less than 25.7. So we have a yes here. Now, normal. OK, so we want it to be either bigger than 30, which we don't have, or we could have a graph. OK, so this graph is a graph we learned about in Chapter 7. We liked that section. It was 7-3. It was really quick. right? The dots, the points, are, are linear. So this is yes, right? Because the points are linear on the graph with no outliers. Done. Easy peasy. All right, so now let's construct that confidence interval. So the formula, because this is for a mean, would be either one of these, but I don't have the standard error, so I'll, as per usual, I'm going to use the one on the right. So formula is x bar plus or minus t alpha over 2 times s over the square root of n. There we go. Lovely. <laughs> so then substitution. OK, now here's the tricky bit. We don't actually know any of these things. We know that n is 20, I guess. That's the only one. <laughs> but we don't know x bar, we don't know s, and we don't know t. We have our work cut out for us here. OK, so we can get all of them since we have the data set. So the data set is available to us in StatCrunch. I have a link to it if you were on a um, PDF of this. You could click on the link. Um, you can also just go onto StatCrunch. Let me show you. So if you go to StatCrunch, um, oh, StatCrunch.com here, and you look up data sets, you can just type NBA uh, weights. Let's see what happens. There it is, right there. Bing. So I've already clicked on it. There it is. OK, so I want to know the mean and the standard deviation. It's been a while. <laughs> so we find the mean and the standard deviation with stat summary stat columns 
I click NBA weights. We learned how to do this way back in chapter three. So sample size, mean, standard deviation. Those are the three things we want. I'm using my control click. Um, if you're on a Mac, you hit the command button and click, but that's what I'm doing and say compute. And there we have it. Okay, so I know that the mean is 207.95, standard deviation is 17.957. So we need to write that down. So it's been a while since we've done that. So it's 207.95 plus or minus, leave space for the T because we don't know what that is yet, 17.957 over the square root of 20. Okay, so we need to make a note. Okay, define x bar, s, and n um, with stack crunch. You use stat, summary stat, columns. Oops, I ran out of space. There we have it. It's been a while since we've done those. <laughs> so, so that's note number one. We're going to get a note number two in a second, but that gets us those bits. Now, what about the T? Well, the T um, we get from, we've already done that a couple, well, for the last two pages. So to find the T, so this is note number two. To find the T alpha over two, use stat calculators T. Right, that's our path. So let me show you that. So stat calculators T. Stat. I can. I mean, I don't have to make this go anywhere. I can just sit there. Stat calculators T. Click between. Put in your degrees of freedom, which is 19 because n was 20, and then put your area in, which is 0.95. That's your confidence level, and say compute, and we get 2.093. Okay, so I'll just remind us all that our degrees of freedom is 20 take away 1, which is 19. All right, so there's note number 2. We're going to need a third note in a second because the result comes from something else. So we have note number 1, note number 2, and then we're going to need a third note. I'm not struggling with this thing. There we go. There we go. Now, the result. Well, to find the lower and the upper, we use stat crunch in a different way. <laughs> so we're going to use stat crunch in the third way. So we, we found this first, then we found the T, right? So there it is. So we found the T, we found the mean and standard deviation. Now we're going to go to stat, T stat, one sample with data. We actually have the data on this one. So we'll click NBA player weights. Confidence level is 0.95, so this is perfect. If you want the critical value, there's another way you can do it. If you click this little box right here, that will also do it. And say compute, and there you have it. And you can see it's finding the same critical T value that we found right there. So that's another way to do it. But what we're particularly interested in is the lower and the upper. Those are our answers. So let me start writing those. So it's 199.546 and 216.354. Now both of those would be weights, so these would be pounds. I should have left space for that. Let me see if I can squeeze it in there. Because this will have units on this one. There you go. Or you could just write the word or LBS at the end of the parentheses. That's fine too. So how do we do that? Well, let's see here. Uh, I need another color. <laughs> Note number three. Okay. So to find that stuff, right, to find this result, it was stat, T stat, one sample, in this case, it was with data. 
that will get you the result. And then the T value will come from the middle note here. So there you go. <laughs> so we're using StatCrunch three ways. Technically, you can avoid the middle way by clicking that little box in on the third one. So if you do stat T stat one sample with data and just check the box for the critical value, you can get it that way too. But the first and the third thing you have to do. It's good for you. It reminds you of all the stuff you've known for the whole course. All right, so now let's interpret this interval. So there's a script for that. We are 95% confident that the mean or average average player weight or let's say weight of all think about my population all NBA players for the 19 2019 2020 season is between uh, let's see 199.546 pounds and 216.354 pounds and yes those are real numbers I'm the one that got the random sample okay so use units if appropriate that's another note right note include units if known, right? If you know them. And keep in mind, it's the script. You know, we're 95% confident that, always how you start it, and it's always between this and this. That's how you end it. The only difference is you have to explain right there. That's the context. In this case, for mu, right? Mu is the average, right? So you're explaining what the average is. What average of what? In this case, it's the average weight of all these NBA players. So that's the only bit, that's the only part that changes for these. All right, I'm actually gonna show how to use the calculator to come up with these values as well. So if you're not using the calculator, you can skip ahead to the next video. Or stop if you're done with this section, <laughs> or um, you don't wanna go on to the next section. All right, T84 folks, let me bring up a T84. All right, TI84 folks. I realized I forgot to tell you guys on the last page how to do this, so let me double back real quick um, for the last page, which is if you want to find the confidence interval, it says it right in the instructions um, up above, but you basically use a uh, stat test T interval. I mean, it's pretty much as simple as that. So stat, oops, if you press the right button, stat test T interval is number eight on this one. It changes depending on what calculator you're in. Um, we have stats on this one, not data, so you click stats. You type in your values, which is 4.34, 1.6545, and 160, and say what confidence you want, and then click calculate. There you go. So if you want to write instructions for yourself um, on a TI-84, I can just kind of write it right here. It's T interval. I'm just going to leave it at that. You can right go from there okay so that's fine oh I must have done something wrong though 4.34 1.6545 maybe I did the wrong let me double check that confidence level oh it was 2.85 geez 2.85 sorry I was reading the wrong bit I was reading the T for no reason whatsoever 0.9 there we go there that's the right answer Okay, next page. So the problem with this next page is that you actually have to have the data in as well. So the first thing you have to go is stat edit and you have to type in all these values. So let me do that and I'll be right back. There we go. All right, so once you have them in, then you go to stat tests and you want the T interval right there. And then let's see here. We want data this time because we have the data. Our data are in L1, list one, so there we go. Frequency, just leave it at one every time and then change it to 0.95 for this one and then calculate. Boom, and it's actually gonna give you um, standard deviation and mean right there. So that's good. So we got the mean and we've got the standard deviation. And then um, if you want the T, 
remember you would get that with inverse t. So you go to a second distribution, inverse t, and then say the area, which you'd have to figure out, because if this is 0 0.95, that's 0 0.025 for the alpha over 2, because alpha is 0.05, and then you cut it in half, and your degrees of freedom is 19, and you would paste, and there you have it. So um, you can find this with inverse t, and you can find 1 and 3 together. So let me just kind of put that in there. So this one would be inverse t if you're in the um, calculator, and this one would be t interval. And it's a little bit easier for you because this one actually is found in t interval as well. So you can find both 1 and 3 with the same thing. So that's something that's nice. So that's TI-84 stuff. Just remember when you're in T interval, of course, you have to choose data and stats just like they do in StatCrunch. So data, if you have a column of data entered, stats, if you don't, and you have the, the values given to you 